It's the same thing with power and water and everything else. They are training you that it doesn't exist and there's not enough of it. You know, there were all this lecturing about drought. And there is a surface drought in central Texas. The only place there's a true drought is in west Texas, where they really do have their aquifers running very low. They can drill their wells deeper, but the point is that there is a real drought in west Texas. There's a surface drought uh, in central Texas, and they're on the news. Don't wash your clothes as much. Uh, wear your clothes three four times. Don't drain your swimming pools. Uh, water once a week only at night. Uh, there's no water. Well, the, uh, uh, only the state is allowed to keep their public fountains going because they're God. I saw that this week. Meanwhile, driving to work the other day, I drive by three golf courses, and I, I meant to do a report, but then I got late and didn't do it. I wanted to shoot an iPhone report for the website. I pulled in, and, and in the morning, the sprinklers were going. Everything was green, and I pulled over to a greenskeeper at one of the places. I pulled into three of them as they're just lined up driving into work, and I pulled up to a greenskeeper, and I said, is that city water? And he goes, yeah, yeah, we're on that. I mean, I, I worked at Great Hills, so I already know that. I worked at Great Hills one summer in college, but um, this is a complete joke. This is a complete joke. They've got neighbors tattling on each other. <gasps> my neighbor watered more than once this week. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to call the police on him and give him a $500 fine. When you could, if the government didn't block it, sink a well anywhere in central Texas, 500 feet or more, for maybe $10,000, $15,000, and hit water. I mean, I live out in the country, and there, there's a dry creek bed, and if you walk down at 100 yards, there's an area full of catfish and bass and everything that's spring-fed. It's just running, because right below the ground is just giant oceans of water. You know, I said I'd get into this Ron Paul uh, FEMA camp report, and I'm going to get to it. You know, I, you know what? I, I did probably 15 hours of preparation for this radio show today. Saturday... I was up till 2 o'clock in the morning last night. Uh, I probably was working and researching six, seven hours a day. And, you know, I haven't covered really any of the news. Oh, here's one. Air Force uh, raids gun shop. That's uh, News 8 CBS, Las Vegas. The U.S. Air Force led a raid against Las Vegas gun shop Friday. Oh, oh we'll be right back with the martial law news. Stay with us. While you're saying that. Do you think Americans are justified in thinking that HR 645 could lead to detainment camps for American citizens during the I, I don't know this number, you remember to tell me. The emergency center right. establishment. Yeah, I know that's their goal. They are setting up the stage for violence in this country. Yeah. 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 HR 645, establishing emergency centers for disaster relief and national emergency. Here's Ron Paul one more time on HR. Up the stage for violence in this country. Yeah. Get down about it. Thank you. All right, now there's that report. I, I hope that Robert Wannick, a friend of the show, will also post it without the music because it makes it not as um, not as conductive on radio. But you see something like this, Ron Paul being asked, "Hey, should we worry about Americans and?" FEMA and people being put in these camps, yeah, that's their goal. They're setting up the stage for violence in this country, no doubt about it, responded Ron Paul. And then we have our full reports and congressional hearings uh, dealing with this legislation. Now, here's what's scary about it. When we got this bill uh, now a year and a half ago, and we read it, it was exactly what I'd seen at urban warfare drills with Army, Marines, FEMA and others, and I videotaped all this in the late 90s. Um, the Marines would come up with their machine guns and say, turn your camera off. It's all in my film, Police State 2000 and Police State to the Takeover, 1999, 2000, two films I put out. And we said then with economists, this isn't coming now. 
They're just preparing the military and, and getting everybody ready for it and having the military also interviewed in those films uh, and in future films like Road to Tyranny, military officers uh, who had raided gun shops going back even into the 1980s as part of secret programs. So there's a long-term secret program to get rid of Posse Comitatus. Now you see regular army at the Kentucky Derby uh, or at the Super Bowl, or you see the army running DWI checkpoints uh, in Los Angeles and other areas. Now it's just in your face. It's just, a, and, and Homeland Security admitted two years ago, we've got a deal for Brigade Homeland starting with 4,000 troops. It'll then be 378,000 troops. And now they've announced they've got 100,000 ready. Uh, they've got to have the 300 plus thousand ready by 2012. I, I mean, they are getting ready for this. And then if you talk about it, you get laughed at. Just like earlier in the year, I said, well, here's the different power commission saying they can't open new power plants and the population's grown. So they're going to have rolling blackouts in cold weather and hot weather. We put an article together and the White House attacks us and says we're crazy. And then today it's all back in the news. Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Washington Post. Reuters, you name it, all saying exactly what I said six months ago. Top private intelligence uh, group comes out and says Bin Laden wasn't killed at that compound, according to their analysis and their sources. Of course he wasn't. I, I mean, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we're being lied to. Obama said we'd be in Libya days, not weeks. It's four and a half months later. Every week they say Tripoli is falling. I'm not a fan of Gaddafi, but... I'm an even bigger enemy of the real Al-Qaeda groups that is admittedly the leadership of the rebels. You know, that's admitted. And you can't dress this thing up. You can't get away from reality. You can't get away from the reality that hundreds of power plants are now being shut down that aren't insiders. And power prices are going up because there's less competition and there's blackouts happening. And the White House's response is, we're crazy. Even when the Texas Commission says it's happening, Texas supplies the power to five states. The dominant power supplier to five states, New Mexico, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Have you noticed your power prices went up? The city of Austin came out last year and said, we're going to double power prices. Uh, th what was it? Th 3.6 billion in the next two years. We're, we're going with the carbon taxes. What is a carbon? Well, what does it do to charge people more, more money for power? Has nothing to do with it. China builds three power plants a week. We build less than three a year. This is the deindustrialization of this country. I'm digressing. Here's the headline Ron Paul, they're setting the stage for violence in this country. There, meaning Homeland Security. We have the other reports on it, and we have our other report uh, dealing with it all. Let me just go ahead and play you a clip now. The clergy response teams, we got these documents three years before local newscasts around the nation, this is out of New Orleans, aired pieces telling the public, yes, it's true, your preachers are being paid by the government and trained to tell you to go to camps and turn your guns in and take shots. We got these documents in 2005, man time's flown. Three years later, it comes out. People thought we had fake documents, even though they had the phone numbers to FEMA on them. Okay, I mean, how creepy is that? They've got preachers, now over 100,000 nationwide, trained to spy on their flock and to tell them to submit to government. Okay, we're going to play the DeFazio first. This is a, a congressman wanting to see the martial law plans and being told by Bush he can't see them under the presidential decision directive. And it's the same under Obama. See, we effectively have a dictatorship, not of the president himself. He's a blackmailed, kept, controlled teleprompter reader, no matter who it is, unless it's Ron Paul. They're all globalists paid for over and over again to get to this point. They've proven themselves political prostitutes. And you have to understand the office of the presidency now through its executive power. I mean, look at Obama launching wars without congressional approval. Obama putting carbon taxes in without congressional approval. Obama just legalized 300,000 deportees saying, I, I don't need Congress to pass amnesty. I might deport felons. I feel that violates federal law, immigration law. See, that's a dictator. And, and it's, it's getting worse by the minute. 
And it's only expanded. Now, uh, we did pull up the clergy response team clip. Just go to YouTube and type this in. Uh, it, it's also on my film, Police State for the Rise of FEMA. Now, the very first word gets partially cut off. She says, will martial law ever be declared in America? The government versus the people. The government's biggest problem, us. I thought we're the government. Romans 13, we're the government. It's the government that's been taken over that's not obeying the law. It's the government that's criminal. You're not supposed to obey Hitler or Stalin. We'll be right back with more congressional reports. We're into the second hour. I want to open the phones up. I have played some of the clips I want to go over, but I want to break down exactly how they will roll out the implementation of the camps uh, coming up in the next segment. I want to play a clip from congressional hearings back in the 80s dealing with martial law concentration camp plans. The toll-free number to join us on the Sunday broadcast is 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. Specifically, I'd like to get your take on uh, the prospects of paying roughly double uh, in the next few years for your electrical power. You're already paying more under the uh, unofficial carbon taxes. The carbon taxes are they shut down their competition and you pay the insiders more money. <laughs> That's a direct tax, uh, a direct uh, insiders. I mean, why wouldn't big corporations come in if the people aren't aware and informed and they've got corrupt politicians that'll do whatever they're told? Wouldn't corporations come in and shut down their competition? Of course they would. Of course they would. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Do you have a view on that? Do you have a view on Ron Paul? Next time he's on, I'll bring more of this up with him. I've brought up the... Emergency Centers Establishment Act, and he said it is a concern. But we already have the biggest prison population in the world. We're going into a depression. Gold is at $1,880 an ounce right now. What do you expect? What do you expect to happen? What do you think these tyrants would do? They've done exactly what tyrants throughout history have done over and over and over again. So again, uh, I want to take your calls, but have your comment or your question ready because we can move to the next person. Uh, the toll-free number to join us is 877-789-ALEX or 877-789-2539. It's a different number than the weekday show because we're, we're still on the Genesis Network on Sundays, but um, we're running the entire show out of our own office, uh, our own studios here on the Sunday two-hour transmission. Now, some of the other news that we'll get to after I finish up with the FEMA camp information and the fact that it's starting to come out in the mainstream news. First responders not welcomed at 911 ceremony. That's right, none of them are welcomed because they've been complaining about the deadly dust and what the government did to them, CNN reports. First responders decry exclusion from 911 ceremony. Only in globalist controlled America with a K. Would you see that type of evil? Uh, also, uh, we've got um, the latest on Libya. We're going to be breaking down. And, of course, I mentioned this earlier, but I've, I've got to get more into it. Barack Obama cannot get Congress to pass amnesty for illegal immigrants. So now he's just going to ram it down our throats any way that he can. And uh, he's saying, I'm just going to legalize the deportees now. We might hold felons and deport them, but everybody else you go free. I'm gonna launch wars, I'm gonna shut down power plants, I'm going to have the ATF go after gun shops for laws that don't exist, uh, I'm gonna have the Air Force raid gun shops in Las Vegas. That's CBS News, Las Vegas, I mean, see, that's the thing, we've gone over the slippery slide. We were starting to go over it, and you know, Bush five years ago would say, hey, I promise I'm not spying on you without warrants, I promise. Then it came out he was, and so now they just go, yeah, we're spying on you. Yeah, Dine Court runs shell kidnapping rings. Well, what's the big deal? Yeah, the, the, the Marines grow the opium in Afghanistan, and we help ship it to you. What's wrong with that? Yeah, we're putting cancer viruses in your vaccines. Yeah, fluoride does give you a seven-fold increase in bone cancer and brain disorders increase. You know what? Yeah, your diabetes doubled the last decade and so did your cancer, but mm, 
We got white papers talking about how we're doing it to you. So what? You know, there's a football game on. Here you go, doggy. Football game. Don't worry, we're killing you. Ha <laughs> ha. We'll be right back.